Hi there, folks. This is Sean Broderick. I'm in West Palm Beach, but I'm speaking to a Canadian miner. And uh, let me tell you a little about Yale Simpson, who is the co-founder and the co-chair of Exeter Resources, which is a great company you probably never heard about, but you should pay attention to this one because they control a deposit that's the largest undeveloped, or I should say, largest gold copper a deposit not owned by a major company down in South America and it has so much potential down there and I have been to visit it in the past but over the years they've been developing it um, not actually you know bringing ore out of the ground but moving it forward getting things like water rights stuff like that and really bringing this um, to a point where you know something good can really happen so I've asked Yale just to speak to you guys to explain what's going on with that project and with his company in general. Yale, could you speak to my subscribers? Yeah, uh, and I'm pleased to have the opportunity to do so. Um, Sean has capsulated fairly well. The, the deposit that we have in, in Chile, and it's in the Andes of Chile, and for those of you who know a bit about Chile, you know that Chile is a really big copper producer. Uh, I mean, they get significant, maybe 40% of their whole revenues in Chile come from copper. But this is gold and copper, and and we made a discovery there in 2007, and the discovery turned out to be really large, um, extraordinarily large, and we invested 90 million dollars in taking it through uh, discovery, drilling it, engineering, and what have you, to show its its um, uh, commercial potential. Capital markets and and the gold price in particular have been really brutal for the last several years and diminishing and confidence in the sector has been that nobody's building these things at present. However, so now yeah. we have the price of gold moving up, right? Well, it has an immediate bearing on us. Right, I mean that lit a fire under your stock, didn't it? Well, it lit a fire under the stock because the valuations on companies like ours went down by 90%. Okay, so the deposits there, the cash we have in the bank of 17 million US is there, but the interest in the sector evaporated, right, John? Mm -hmm, sure and did. went down by 90%. Now, this year, gold has perked up. It went up by $200 an ounce. And what that did was all of a sudden, some eyes, not many, some eyes started to come onto the gold space. And the senior companies, even like Barrick Money, doubled and were up 80%. Okay? But we're still a penny stock, and yet we were. Prior to this, we had a $8 a share. Good asset, good management, cash in the bank, but there was no interest in equities up until the last six months. Right, and one thing that I did want to mention is this deposit is like a really, it's like more than one deposit. You have a nice oxide cap on top, which is very easy to mine. And then underneath that, there is something that would take more involved. That is the kind of thing that, um, wouldn't take that much money to actually put it no, into no. actual production. And, and that's right? interesting, Sean, that you say that because when we made this discovery, it turned out to be really big in terms of the total gold inventory that we're talking about in the order of 40 million ounces gold equivalent. That's the whole thing. The whole thing. Okay? Yeah. And so when you've got 40 million ounces, you say, okay, well, how big is this development going to be? How many billions of dollars is it going to take to build a project that big? And what what you're referring to is that in terms of our deposit, it's actually two deposits. It's a very shallow one, which is about 1.7 million ounces, which is not small. That's a decent sized project. And it's a gold oxide deposit, which you can mine, get your trucks in and develop it. And then later on, take that cash flow and put it into the next stage of going deeper in your pit, the next stage of going underground. So it's it's a potentially a 42 year project okay it's not small it's world class nobody has found anything remotely as big for the last nine years in the in the entire world and yet we do have some optionality of getting this started at a much smaller scale much lower capital right i think that if the price of gold hadn't crashed this project would probably be in production right now but we've had a four and a half year grinding bear market which yeah. is just as you said compress the price of everything down and down and down. But now we're starting to see the price of gold perk back up again. 
And that should start to spark some interest in companies like yours, ones that have these great resources that they've worked on, done the research, they know what they have. And so bringing something like that forward, putting it into the real development stage would not be that hard. And, 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 and these large companies that haven't been spending money on actually finding new mines right now, they're probably going to have to start looking around at that kind of Well, thing. they're certainly not replacing their ounces, you know. This, like I said, this was the last sizable discovery made by the mining industry since 2007, right? Mm -hmm. So you're in a situation that, well, where's the new gold going to come from? Because the world mines 82 million ounces of gold a year, and yet mm -hmm. people aren't finding that anymore. It's going to start coming out of the bank. It's got to come out of somewhere. So, yeah. so we have had to reinvent the company. We, we've looked at this project and said, how can we make it smaller initially? How can we generate cash flow? Because there's a very different world, and it's very much changed the investor perception of just because you found something big doesn't mean it needs a lot of capital. Okay. Now, speaking of that, you guys have cash in the bank, $17 million yes. U.S. Um, you are listed on the NYSE market, right? Yes. Yep. What's that symbol again? XRA. XRA. And um, great team. These guys know what they're doing, and it's certainly worth a look. It's in Chile. It's not in the U.S. And uh, Chile is one of the more stable places to actually work, and they like mining companies. They treat them well, unlike some other countries that I can name. And so there's a lot to look at. I think that it really deserves a look for people who are, since the price of gold started to perk up, looking for some interesting things going on in the space. Yeah. And uh, so thanks very much for speaking to my subscribers. Is there anything you'd like to add? I, I think um, what, what, the people who follow companies like ours or buy our stock at these prices are a bit contrarian. They're looking at gold and saying, I think gold's going to make a move here. And if it does, where do I get the most leverage to the gold price? And it's with companies like ours that have got a lot of gold in the ground where Yes, there's higher risk because it's not built yet, but you get this huge multiple. And we've seen it before. We saw it in the 90s and into the 2000s on companies that got massive revaluations simply by a higher gold price, mm -hmm. not really by doing much else. Okay. You don't need it. Well, thanks very much, you folks. Thanks for tuning in and seeing this. I hope to find a lot more interesting stocks like this. This is a really interesting time when people hate gold and when the price is starting to turn around, but the market doesn't seem to realize that yeah. yet, that's when you can really find some um, really good bargains. So thanks thank for you, speaking Raymond. to my subscribers. And, and thank you. you. You folks stay tuned.